What we find in all of our readings today, we find many notes of the sacrament of baptism. We find many notes uh, regarding uh, what is bestowed upon the sinner. We find many notes uh, of those who work in the vineyard and for those who uh, work much and work little. But there's one thing in particular that I noticed as I was studying what they all have in common. And what they all kind of have in common is this idea of fairness. Now, in case you're kind of seeing where this sermon's going, you're right, it is. This idea of fairness has always irritated me ever since I grew up. When I was a child, I actually believed that everything should be fair. That everything should be on a level playing field. And then I entered sports. And then even in t-ball, Everything was basically fair. You hit the ball, you ran to third base, they just sent you over to first. No big deal, right? You hit the ball, you ran to the pitcher. It didn't matter because the ball had run and run through every player on the field anyway. No big deal. We all get to first base. It doesn't matter how many swings or where the ball goes. And it always made me laugh, or makes me laugh now, to think that T-Ball has a catcher. And that has been ingrained in us since we were children. And it has only perpetuated, and it has only gotten much, much worse. To where everyone gets a trophy. That bothers me a lot because we can see the fruit of that labor. A generation of kids who are entitled to everything because it didn't matter whether their parents made their science project and loaded it in on a flatbed truck or they just bought one from A.C. Moore that was a half-built half volcano for the ninth year in a row with, with vinegar and baking soda. They all got the same ribbon. I can't stand that. And the fact of the matter is that it has bec it's becoming the American way. When the American way was pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and, and going out and what you put into something is what you get out of it. Or what you don't put into it is what you get out of it. Now, we want a fair playing field. And there's three places in particular that we want fairness to always be. Politics, social situations, school, sports, whatever it may be, and church. I'll sum up the politics one really fast. It's never been fair since it was invented. Done. The second one we see every single day. We expect everything to be fair and from little children, and I hear it from mine all the time, that's not fair. And I say this to him, who told you it was supposed to be. Because with children, they're given everything, and so their idea of fairness is not that others should receive things as well. Their idea of fairness is that I get more than everybody else. As George Orwell, the great prophet, once said, 
all pigs are equal, or all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Everybody wants fairness. They just want a little bit more fairness for themselves. And kids understand that because we give them. Because we love them. But then, when, they, when we don't teach them what, that, that they earn what they get, then we, get, we grow up and we have 33-year-olds who are still living with their parents and, uh, and have not entered into the workforce because they simply have a, a good ride. They have it easy. Mom still does the laundry. Video games. All day. Working is for those other people. Well, here in our text, particularly in our epistle text, we actually see the opposite. In our epistle text, it says that everybody runs the race. Everybody runs the race. But only one receives the wreath. Everybody equally it starts at the starting gate. There, everyone is equal. But only one receives the wreath. So you discipline your body, you train, you work hard. And actually, I prefer the Greek text that says, I beat my body into shape in order that I beat everyone else to the finish line. I cage my body. I eat what is good and I throw away what is bad so that I will win. And when we reach that finish line and we turn around and we go, yes! And, every, and then you turn around and everybody has the same size trophy. You go, well, what was all that for? Well, Scripture clearly tells us the world isn't like that. The world isn't truly, at the end of the day, the world isn't fair. And you do have to work hard and pull yourself up by your bootstraps in order to make something out of yourself and, and provide for your family. And we all know this. We all know this. And even the 38, 40, 45 year old kid who's still living with his parents playing video games, one day the money's going to run out and they're going to learn the lesson hard. Eventually, we all come to the understanding that not everything is fair. In fact, almost nothing is fair. And I think that we should get used to that idea. So we have the first, politics. Never been fair, never going to be fair. Let's just put it aside. Society. Nothing is fair. Do your best to provide for your family. Make sure that you work hard you beat your body into submission. You work to provide. And you work so that your work is rewarded. But then we come to the church. And everything that I just explained about fairness is turned upside down. You can't work. For your salvation. Fairness has got, once again, has nothing to do with you. You don't start at the same level and run as fast as you can and the first one to Jesus wins. It's not a great divine game of hide and go seek with Jesus being the base. Fairness has nothing to do with your works going towards Christ. Fairness has nothing to do 
with Christianity whatsoever except for this. Christ who knew no sin became sin for us. And, and therefore the only thing that fairness has to do with the church is that the one who was crucified was crucified unfairly so that you, the ones who have not been fair to God or to one another, would be forgiven. You want to talk about unfair? The crucifixion is the most unfair thing in the history of anything. The one who knew no sin was crucified. He literally became sin. And God died for you to be forgiven, not for you to be fair. This idea of fair is absolutely stupid. And it drives me crazy because even as adults, we still, still seem to do it. If we don't think we're being treated fairly or respectfully, then we speak over one another. If we don't feel that we're being uh, fairly treated, then we make sure that the next person is treated even less fairly. And we keep pushing it on and on and on. But at the end of the day, what we come to understand is that the greatest unfair thing that has ever happened is the crucifixion. But here's more news. It's not fair that you were baptized. Because you don't deserve it. You don't deserve the holy waters that we mock and that we take for granted every single day. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve God's grace. And you might say, well, that's not fair. And I would say, you're right. You're damnable sinners. And that's where you deserve to go. To hell. Isn't it great that God is not a fair God? Because He would not see you go to hell. He would not, He refused to give you what was fair and gave you what was gracious gave you what was glorious, forgave your sins when you could not be forgiven. And as a token and as a remembrance of this unfairness, He gives you His body to eat and His blood to drink. As a token, as a remembrance, as a tactile thing, you, that, ev that even when you forget and you leave, is still in your body. So what's fair got to do with it? Whether you were baptized as an infant or came here as an adult, here is my words of warning and my words of grace. Would you dare begrudge Jesus what He does with His generosity? There are people here who understand fairness very differently than others. In particular, I mean, we can go through the list of, of all socioeconomical uh, uh, elements or whatnot, but also people who have buried spouses people who have buried children, people who have buried miscarriages, people who have hoped for children and not received them, people who lost their fathers too soon and grew up without a father, people who lost mothers too soon and were raised without mothers, to those, oh, the fact that, that, that it's even made legal that we have baby drop-offs. That as long as you drop off a baby in a receptacle within 72 hours, it's legal. 
and you can leave your child there. To those who have been tricked into aborting their children by Planned Parenthood, to those who have been uh, manipulated by every way possible, anyone who has watched Earth fall upon the casket of, the loved, of a loved one knows what's not fair. <sighs> But I'll be honest, all of those in, his, in this sanctuary that, that have had tragedy such as this happen, I've talked to them all and none of them have said it's not fair. That's the strength of faith. That's the strength that Christ gives to you. That's the love that Augustana has and should have for each other. That we pull together and love one another, not when it's fair, but when it's not fair. Why? Because that's exactly what Christ did for you and does for you. Like I said, anyone who has put a clod of dirt on the casket of a loved one knows what it means to not be fair. Likewise, Christ knows that feeling of not being fair. Because He died for you. For the forgiveness of of your sins and that makes all fairness or unfairness moot so keep your society fairness where it belongs in the whiners club and don't bring it into the church because the church is not for whiners the church is for those who with a broken voice cries Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That's got nothing to do with fairness. Thanks be to God. Amen.